today we're going to be talking about section 2.4, which is on writing equations of line. And that's what our goal is today. We're going to write linear equations. And we're going to be able to look at a graph and write an equation. We're going to be able to take a slope and an intercept. We're going to write an equation. We're going to be able to take a point and a slope, write an equation. We're going to be, take, be able to take two points, um, write an equation. So we're going to give, be given a bunch of different um, data, and we're going to need to be able to write an equation for those. So the first thing we're going to look at are the three types of equations we're going to we're going to work with today. The first one is slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. And m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. And we've used that before many times. The other one we're going to use to write equations of lines are point-slope form. And that's going to be y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. And again here, m once again is the slope. And this time we have x sub 1 comma y sub 1. That's the ordered pair that they're going to give us. So we're going to be given an ordered pair in a point, or a point and a slope. We use point slope form. We use slope and an intercept. We're going to use slope intercept form. Now the other equation is one we talked about last, uh, the other day in section 2.3 is ax plus by equals c. And that's standard form. Now, a lot of times we just use standard form as a way to write our answer, get x and y on the same side. So for if they say write an equation in standard form, we're still going to use either slope-intercept form or point-slope form to write our equation. All right, now example one, we're going to jump down here. We're going to look at this graph. We're going to write an equation given the slope and the y-intercept. And it says, write equation of the line shown. Well, I'm going to redraw this graph. I'm going to draw a different line here because that one got off a little bit. So we're going to take it and we're going to draw a graph, and then we're going to find the slope and the y-intercept of it. So we're going to take this graph, and we're going to write an equation in line. So the first thing we're going to do, if we're given a graph, we want to find two things. We want to find the slope, and we want to find the y-intercept. So in this case, I'm going to find two points, and here's one, and here's one. And we to get from those, we went down one. So that means my slope is going to be negative one, and over one, two. So it's negative one half. And then obviously here, the y-intercept is at one. So there is my y-intercept. Well, if they give me the slope and the y-intercept, I'm going to use slope-intercept form. So y equals mx plus b. All we have to do is plug those numbers in. So y equals negative one half x plus one. There's the equation of our line. So go ahead and do the guided practice questions one, two, and three. Hit pause when you, or uh, yeah, hit pause, and then you can hit play when you're ready to go on. And there are the answers to your guided practice questions one, two, and three. Again, notice those are super, super easy. All you have to do is plug in the uh, value for m in your equation, plug the value for b in your equation, and you're done. So jumping down to example two, it says write an equation given the slope and a point. Now, if they give us a slope, which is right here, and a point, which is right here, I'm going to use point-slope, because it is, they give you a point and a slope. So, y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. So, I'm going to plug my stuff in. I know that here is my y value, and here is my x value. So, I'm going to just plug those in. So, I have y minus negative 1 equals my slope is negative one-half times x minus eight. So this gives us y plus two equals negative one-half x. If we do the distributive property, plus four. So now you subtract two from both sides, and you get y equals negative one-half x plus two. And there is the equation of your line. Now, many of you have done this using slope-intercept form before, and that's perfectly fine. You can use slope-intercept form if you would like to.
Example three says write an equation of parallel or perpendicular lines. Write an equation of the line that passes through the point, negative 2, 1, and is A, parallel to this equation, y equals negative 3x plus 1, and B, perpendicular to that equation, y equals negative 3x plus 1. So the first thing you need to remember is how to find the slope. Well, the slope of this line is negative 3. The slope of this line is also negative 3. So if we're looking to parallel, we know that it's got to be the same. So if the parallel line is negative 3, the point is negative 2, 1. So now I'm going to use point slope form. So y minus 1 equals negative 3 times x minus negative 2, which is x plus 2. So y minus 1 equals negative 3, x minus 6. So y equals negative 3x minus 5. And there's our equation. Now over here, we're going to look at perpendicular. So it's going to be perpendicular. Well, we know that the slope of the perpendicular line is going to be the opposite reciprocal. So that means I flip it, so that's this 3 over 1, which means it's going to be 1 third and it's going to be positive. And the point here is still going to be negative 2, 1. So now I'm going to do the same thing with this. y minus 1 equals 1 third times x plus 2, because it's x minus negative 2. And then we are going to use the distributive property. y minus 1 equals 1 third x plus 2 thirds. I'm going to add 1. So y is going to equal 1 third x plus, well that's 3 thirds, so that's going to give me 5 thirds. So there's the equation of our perpendicular line. It's y equals 1 third x plus 5 thirds. So notice again, if they give you an equation, you must find the slope. So the slope is something you're always going to need for the line, no matter what. what they, whatever they give you, you're going to have to find the slope. Make sure you know it. Then, sometimes you'll need a point. Sometimes you'll need the y-intercept. Um, but you always will need the slope. So go ahead and do guided practice questions four and five. So you can hit pause in the video and hit play when you are ready to move on. And here are the answers to guided practice questions four and five. Again. Notice in the parallel lines, two, two lines that are parallel must have the same slope. And perpendicular, two lines that are perpendicular must have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. So the next thing we're going to look at it is example four. We're going to jump down here, write equations given two points. So now they're just going to give us any two random points. And we're going to figure out, all right, how do I write the equation? Again, we said the first thing you're always going to need to know is you're always going to need to know the slope. So if I have these two points, I'm going to find the slope. So we're going to go the y's, subtract the y's, and then subtract the x's. So our slope in example 4 is negative 5 halves. So now we have a a slope and we have two points. Well, you can use either one of those points to use point slope form. So I'm going to use the first one. I'm going to go y minus 20 equals negative 5 halves x minus negative 8, which is x plus 8. So I'm going to go y minus 20 equals negative 5 halves x. And then that's going to give us negative 20. We're again doing the distributive property. Well, we add our 20, those are going to cancel out. So our equation is going to end up being y equals negative 5 halves x, which means the slope is negative 5 halves, which we said, and the y-intercept is, in this case, 0. So next, we're going to jump down to example 5. 
It says, in a chemistry experiment, you record the temperature of a compound to be negative 5 degrees one minute after beginning the experiment. Six minutes after you begin the experiment, the temperature is 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Write a linear equation that models the temperature of the compound in relation to elapsed time. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to come up with a couple of ordered pairs. Well, we know that one minute after the experiment started, it's at negative 5 degrees. And then six minutes after it started, it is 20 degrees. So again, like we said before, we must find the slope. So let's find the slope. M equals, and I'm going to go 20 minus negative 5, which is 20 plus 5. There's my Ys. 6 minus 1. So that's going to be 25 over 5, which is 5. So the slope is 5. And I'm going to use this point just because the numbers are smaller. So I'm going to go Y minus negative 5 equals 5, which is the slope, X minus 1. So we have Y plus 5 equals 5X minus 5. Subtract 5 from both sides. And there is the equation of our line. So y equals 5x minus 10. So now, at any time in this experiment, we could calculate what the temperature is if this formed a linear equation. So there's the equation for this situation. They're saying it's linear. So uh, two minutes after it, ex it started, it'd be 0 degrees. Put in the 2. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 10 is 0. So. All right, so I would like you to take a couple of minutes to do the guided practical, practice questions 6 through 9. Um, and number 9 is in your book on page 100. So go ahead and pause the video. You can hit play when you're ready to move on. And there are the answers to the guided practice questions 6 through 9. If you look at example 9 in your book, or example 5, in the book that's where question nine goes with so they'll show you how to do those types of things but there's your answer I right, jump it down to example six and it says write a model using standard form so it says you have six dollars to spend on drinks and a salad at the school cafeteria drinks are dollar 25 each and salad costs 20 cents per ounce write an equation of this situation so what we're going to do is we know that it's going to cost $1.25 per drink and that the salad is going to be $0.20 cents per ounce. And let's call this, I don't want to use S, I'll oh, we'll use S because it's salad. Um, I don't want to use O because that'll look like a zero. And then that's going to equal our price. So they don't ask us to solve the equation. They just ask us to model it. And there it is. So however many drinks we get, put that in for D. However, how many ounces of salad we get, that goes in for S. So there is our equation. All right, so go ahead and do guided practice question 10. Um, it says, in example six, suppose the cafeteria charges $1.10 and the salad costs $0.35 cents per ounce. Write an equation of the model in this situation. And in example six in the book, they say that they, you have $30. You have, uh, yeah, $30. Oh, wait, this is the wrong one. Okay, so in this in this situation here, let's say we have, uh, $30 to spend on food. So write an equation using the same thing. So you can go ahead and pause it really quickly, write that equation, and then hit play when you're ready to go on. All right, and so there is the answer that you would get in this problem. Notice we just changed a dollar ten for the drink, and the salad is $0.35 cents per ounce for a total of $30. So today in section 2.4, we looked at writing equations of lines. Now remember, we always have to find the slope. The slope, we always need the slope. 
Um, but we're going to write equations of line given a point and a slope, so we're going to use point slope. Given a slope and an intercept, we'll use slope intercept. Uh, given two points, you can use either one. Given um, a graph, so we're going to take all of these different pieces of data and we're going to write equations for the lines. So in section 2.4, your homework assignment is on page 101.